What's up, Navigation Traders? Today is Friday, November 9th. Welcome to this week's video update. Before we jump into the alerts, I want to give you all a sneak peek into something that we're going to be rolling out here in a couple weeks. And uh, as, as pro members, I want to give you the first look. And uh, because I like you, I like you, you're my people. So what I am showing you here is a kind of a uh, inside peek at our new navigation trading community. We're calling it the Trade Hacker Community, where we can hack each other's trades and, and just kind of get to know other members and interact with other members. Uh, super excited about this. This is, the, uh, this is kind of the home screen, and this is going to be available for everyone. And so uh, you can come in here. You're going to see different posts that we make. Uh, you know, we've got our blog posts and some other things here. And so if you said, came in here and you could just say, hey, uh, you know, why do we enter trades with high IV? And then you could post that. You can enter it as a specific topic, like options know-how, for example, to kind of keep these segregated in different topics and hit post. Uh, I, as the host, can notify everyone on a post, but in this case, I'll hit don't notify. And that will pop up. And then, you know, we can answer as the host. You all can jump in and make suggestions or answers as well. Uh, so you could say, uh, because we make more money and comment. And then, you know, us or somebody else could come in and say, yes, we like that answer, heart it. So this is kind of like a private Facebook group without the distractions of Facebook. And we, we did that on purpose because we want to have a place for just traders, uh, just navigation traders to come and interact, ask questions, and, uh, and get to know other, other members as well. So there is, there's going to be a, what's called a discovery tab where you can search you know, some of the top posts, some of the top topics, view the different members. There's a member section, so you can, you can classify yourself as a new trader, intermediate, or advanced trader. You can, you can uh, look at other members near you. So if, if you are in a specific area and you want to find other like-minded traders to potentially interact with or potentially even meet up with, uh, you're, you're going to have that ability. Now, if, if you don't want to put your name out there, you don't have to do that either. You can remain anonymous if you want. But here's what I'm really excited about specifically for you as pro members is we are going to have a specific group specifically for our VIP pro members, which is all of you listening to this right now. And if you click on that, it takes you into a different section that's only accessible by pro members. And so in this section, I will not only be posting the alerts, so it's another area that we'll be posting the alerts, and then it allows you to ask any questions about that. Sometimes I'll post an alert and I'll get a ton of questions on that specific alert. So this will be an area where you can post that, get answers from myself as well as other traders in the community. And the other thing that I'm super excited about is... I'll be able to jump in here into this VIP pro members groups and do live broadcasts. So if there's something that I get a lot of questions on, I can jump in here, shoot a quick live video. You can join live. I'll, I'll send out an alert saying, hey, I'm joining, I'm uh, broadcasting live in 10 minutes in the VIP pro member group area. You can jump in here, check that out. Obviously, if you aren't able to join live, it'll be automatically recorded and posted in this area. So you can check that out. Uh, be just doing all kinds of cool events and, uh, and broadcasts and different things. It's going to allow us to get to know each other and, 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 and allow other traders to interact with, with questions you might have, allow you to answer other questions. You know, we get bombarded by, uh, by emails. And so this is going to uh, really help us be a little bit more efficient in getting your questions answered quickly. And, uh, so anyway, super excited about it. So that's kind of the sneak peek. And uh, stay tuned for more information coming soon. Uh, all right, let's jump into the alerts for the week. Starting with Monday the 5th. And the first trade alert that we send out was on our friend Natty Gas, which has been having some big moves. 
And so let's take a look. We, we did a rolling adjusting trade. So remember when we do options on futures, it's two separate transactions. So we bought that one back and then we rolled out to the next cycle. So we rolled from December to January. And, uh, and so we, we went ahead and rolled that out and we went inverted on that one. So we've got the 3.1 calls and the 3.3 puts. So anytime our puts are higher than our calls, that's what we call inverted. And then we've got our other short strangle as well. So let's take a look at Natty Gas. First of all, big move today. It's up over 6% uh, on top of already being up uh, a few days ago. So big move there. But if we take a look at our trade, here is the strangle that we have that's unadjusted. You can see implied volatility has gone up, uh, but it's still well within our range, even though we're down on that trade. So nothing to do there. And then let me reset these. So we can take a look at the other piece. And then this is our inverted strangle, which I just mentioned in the alert. And so you can see price has moved up. It's, it's testing our break even. But remember, after we make an adjustment, that break even point is not necessarily the trigger to make another adjustment. What we look at is we want to see what the value is left in those premiums on that untested side, which in this case would be the put side. And as you can see, there's there's still a ton of premium left. We've we've got about almost six hundred dollars of a potential one thousand four hundred and twenty. So we're not making any adjustments at this time. You know, if price bounces back into range, that's great. If it does continue higher, then we will stay mechanical and roll our our puts up again and collect that more uh, additional credit. And and typically, when it makes a huge move like this, just understand that you're going to be in the trade a little bit longer. Now, there's nothing that says nat gas can't snap back and come back down into range and we'll be we'll be good to go, but we'll just stay mechanical, stay calm. Remember on these contracts like nat gas and oil, these are bigger contracts, so you want to stay ultra small. We're not going to be adding any additional positions to this. We already have two. And with these futures, you know, we got to we got to stay ultra small. So make sure that you're staying small relative to your account size and you'll be fine. You know, the, the people who um, are kind of freaking out after big moves like this, it's because their their positions are too big. I mean, it all comes down to size. And I know I beat this dead horse over and over and over again, but you've got to stay small. Otherwise, these big moves can hurt you. If you stay small, they cannot hurt you. And so that is the key. So uh, stay mechanical, stay small, and uh, and everything will be fine. Next trade was in opening adjusting trade in IYR. So we added an iron condor in IYR in the December cycle. IV percentile is up at 90 at that point. And so we still had our, our short put vertical on, with, which is part of a previous iron condor. And we were just waiting for price to kind of bounce back up before we did anything. It did, it did end up coming back up and we closed that piece out for a profit, which I'll get to on a future alert. But for now, let's look at IYR and take a look at where we're at. So this is the new iron condor that we added. So we're already up a little bit of profit on that. Not near enough to take off yet. So just looking to continue to manage that. We had that other short put vertical in November, but the price moved up and we were able to book a profit on that November piece. So now we're just still holding the December trade. Next trade was an opening trade in 6E, so we got back into the euro. IV percentile got up to 70 at that point, and so we sold some premium in the euro, and we're still in that trade. Nothing much has moved since then, so you can see we're still pretty dead centered with no, just a little bit of profit in there at this point. Next trade was a closing trade, so we bought back our strangle in 6B, which is the British pound. Booked over 30% of max profit on that trade, and so we are out of the British pound. Nice trade there. And we, we may look to enter. You know, I don't want to get overloaded in currencies because these the pound and the euro are fairly correlated, meaning they move together. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if we take a look at FXB, which is the, the pound ETF, you can see implied volatility is super high. Uh, but we we might make a uh, wait till the euro makes a move, so it's not dead centered, and and we may add on to uh, we may add a six B 
uh, position. FXB, the the ETF, is really just not tradable. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna look at the options on futures if we do enter a new trade there. So, but we are flat. We are out of the British pound at this point. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So our friend wheat has been playing nice as of late. We're still in a royal battle with wheat uh, before we get out of this one with a profit, but we booked over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And then we're still holding our iron condor in the January cycle. So if we take a look at wheat, you can see we're still, still well within range here. Could use a little bit of up movement and just some more time to pass before we do anything else in wheat. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in gold. So we had a short strangle on in gold that we had adjusted and then we got under that 21 days to expiration. So we wanted to roll out to the next expiration cycle. So we rolled from December to January and we kept the same strikes. I mean, it was still pretty centered. So we didn't, we didn't move the strikes around but we just went ahead and rolled that out to extend duration. So you can see what we got here now. It's almost a straddle where these short strikes are pretty close. Uh, but price is right here. So just looking for some more time to pass before we do anything else in gold. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in EEM. So we closed out one of our short strangles in EEM, booked around 30% of max profit on that piece. And then we're still holding our other short strangle in EEM. And you can see we've got some profit here, about $151 of a potential 500 so just waiting for some more profit before we before we do anything in that one. Next trade was opening trade in Netflix. So I was looking for a, a, a stock or an ETF to add in some short delta on. So this is a bearish trade to add some short delta into our overall portfolio. Uh, and basically the reason I was looking at this as a potentially good candidate was because Let's go to the chart real quick. So we saw this big flush down after earnings and then price had popped back up. And so I was just looking at this as a good uh, entry point. You know, a lot of times after a, a stock makes a significant move in one direction and then pops up, sometimes it'll continue on in that original direction. So we're looking for a continuation to the downside. Uh, we did take a little bit of heat. It started to move up on us even more, but then it's rolled over the last couple of days. Uh, giving us uh, a little bit of profit. We're going to wait for, for uh, a bit more before we take this on. It's keeping that short delta exposure in our portfolio that we want. And uh, and we're not quite to 50% of max profit. So we'll look for around that 50% mark potentially, uh, you know, if that comes pretty quick. Otherwise, we'll just kind of hold on, hold on to this for a little while. Um, as far as our overall short delta exposure, we're still a little bit under one-to-one -one on our ratio. So we've got about $350 of theta, and we've got about a, a little over $100 of short delta. So we are under that one-to-one. -one. Remember, we like to be about one-to-one to five-to-one, -one, five -one, uh, but after this big down move that we've been seeing in stocks, uh, we're, we're kind of hovering around that one-to-one -one ratio, and that's, and that's fine at this point. Obviously, if, if the market continues lower, we're gonna wish we had more, but if it uh, rips back higher, you know, we're, we're going to be in a good situation. So we are set on that for this point. Um, and, and, you know, if we see the opportunity to add some more short delta, we might. But at this point, we're just kind of hovering around that one-to-one -one range. Uh, next trade, opening adjusting trade in CL in oil. So we added a short strangle in oil, IV percentile up near that 100 range. And oil has been making a big move here. Uh, got a couple questions about this from members today. So here's real quick here, here's the short strangle that we added. So it's still pretty dead centered here down just slightly on that one. And then we've got our other piece, which is an adjusted short strangle. And you can see price has come down. It, it's come through the break even, but remember this one has already been adjusted. So that break even point isn't necessarily the point of making a neck, another adjustment. We look at the value of the untested side, which in this case is the calls. And you can see we still got a decent amount of premium left in those calls. So if price continues lower, then we will roll those calls down again. Uh, but at this point, we've got a lot of time. We've got 35 days left in that January cycle. So nothing to do yet except for hold and wait. Uh, oil's been just making a huge move down, though. I mean, 
we've had, what is that, one, I think 10 days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 days down in a row, which obviously anytime you have a massive one directional move, uh, of course, that's going to you know test your range bound trades like your iron condors and short strangles. But you've got to stay mechanical and, and you've got to wait. I mean, oil's not going to go down to forever. Oil's not going to zero. There's always going to be value in oil. So, uh, you know, we're just we're going to stay mechanical and play the probabilities, let the probabilities play out. And uh, hopefully it bounces back a little bit and we get back into range and we continue to manage, manage as necessary. Similar to Nat Gas, uh, just keep in mind, you're, you're probably going to be in that trade longer. We're going to extend duration as we get closer to expiration. But again, we've still got 35 days left in January, so we're not looking to roll out or, or, uh, or roll our strikes uh, in any way at this point. Next trade, a closing adjusting trade in SMH. So we closed out one set of our short strangles in SMH. Uh, this was our 99 straddle. And originally it was a strangle, but we had adjusted into a straddle. And we booked over 20% of max profit on this piece. And so I got a couple of questions on that because we did have, uh, we're still down on the trade. Um, so we didn't, it's not like we were profitable. We just booked 20% of that 99 straddle after we rolled. And so it was just, it was dead centered. Premium was getting sucked out of the market after the uh, after the midterm elections. Implied volatility was really contracting, so it just made sense to reduce our exposure in SMH, and so we we booked that piece of the trade. Now we're still holding our other piece, which is uh, an unadjusted strangle. You can see we've got some profit there, not quite enough to take off yet. If we do get to fifty percent of max profit, we'll end up being about break even on the trade overall. So if price moves uh, significantly one direction or another, we'll probably add on another piece to collect some more credit, but just holding in SMH for now. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in FXI. So we had a couple butterflies on in FXI. We uh, got a nice move up, which allowed us to book a over 25% profit on that piece of the trade. And, and then we still had our other one, and then right after that, we sent out another alert adding a new uh, butterfly. And so we, um, so we, now we still have two butterflies. So let's take a look at FXI. So here is our call butterfly. And you can see now price. Let's just take a look at what price has been doing. So we got that move up. We were able to close out of our November piece. And it's moved back down. We added another uh, December piece. And so we've got these two butterflies. This is our call butterfly. You can see price is hanging out right down here near our break even. And then we have our other put butterfly where you can see price is hanging out near the upper end of the range. Now, if we put these both together just to kind of look at the trade overall, you know, that looks basically just like an iron condor, right? And so it's dead centered between the two. It's on the upper range of our uh, put butterfly and the lower range of our call butterfly, but we're just continuing to manage this and hopefully the price just kind of ping pongs around and we can get out of one, get out of the other. May, may look to kind of add and remove depending on what happens, but uh, just in holding mode right now for FXI. Next trade was an opening trade in EWZ. So wanted to get back some exposure in the Brazilian ETF. IV percentile at that point was at 77. So if we take a look at EWZ, you can see price is still pretty, pretty dead centered in our short strangle here in EWZ. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR. So that's the other, that's the one I mentioned. We had, we had that short put vertical in November uh, and price made a nice move up. We were able to get out of that and booked over 35% of max profit on that November iron condor. And then we're still holding the, the IC in December that I already mentioned. Next trade was an opening a trade that we did today in Facebook. So I was looking to sell some more premium. We've we've got a lot of the, the indexes, the indices covered as far as positions on. So I was looking at some different stocks. Facebook just had earnings uh, last week. So we don't have to deal with earnings or anything like that. Implied volatility's popped up the last couple of days. So we sold some premium in Facebook. 
we're getting a really good risk reward for the, uh, the amount of buying power used here. So we, we put on a two contract uh, short strangle on Facebook and you can see it's still pretty dead centered where we put it on. And lastly, we did a rolling adjusting trade in EWW. So price came down and moved past our short strike to the downside. So we just simply rolled down our untested side, which is our calls. And uh, we rolled that down from 50 to 44. And then we're still holding our other piece, our other short strangle in EWW as well. So here is, let's just go to the, the alert first. So here's, here's where that stands. So we just rolled down. Uh, our calls were way up here at 50, and we just rolled those down to 44, collected some more credit, and so now we're just playing the waiting game to get some theta to decay there. Eventually, we'll probably roll that out to January, but again, we've got we've still got 42 days left, so we've got a lot of time uh, for some theta to decay in there. So we're just holding that, and then we've got this other piece. Uh, which is another short strangle. We have not adjusted yet. However, we, we are down on the trade because implied volatility has really spiked since we put this on. Uh, you can see we put it on, uh, I think on this day, and then the next day, just implied volatility spiked up. So that made the options more expensive. So we are down on that piece. However, we're still well within our range here. So just waiting for time to pass in EWW. And those are all the alerts. So let's take a look at some of our other positions. I mentioned 6E, I mentioned oil, ES. So we've got this long put vertical on that we've been keeping for some of that short delta exposure. You can see with the recent uptrend after the midterm elections, it's, it's broken out of our range here. So just looking for some downside to benefit that. We've got uh, 42 days here, so we're not looking to roll that one yet. Uh, we are getting some negative theta because it did break way out of our range, however, you know, we're still, you know, playing the probabilities. We're still going to wait till this potentially can move back into range. If it doesn't, then we'll look to potentially roll out to January once we get closer to expiration. But nothing to do there except for hold. I mentioned gold. I mentioned natty gas. Bonds. So we've got a short strangle on in bonds. And you can see that one is, is pretty centered. We've got some profit in there, but not enough to take off yet. So just in a holding pattern, waiting for some more time to pass some more theta decay in bonds. And we, we do have a lot of short strangles on right now. I mean, with implied volatility the way it is, selling premium you know, is, is the name of the game. And so that's why we have so many of those on right now. I mentioned wheat, uh, apple. We've got this uh, long put vertical on that we've had for several cycles that we've been rolling. Initially put this on to keep that short delta in our portfolio and continuing to do so. After earnings, apple moved down. And so that benefited our trade here, and then it kind of bounced up, and it's starting to look like it's going to roll over again. So just holding on to this, uh, we'll probably roll this one again. We're in December, though. We've got 42 days, so if it makes a sharp move lower, we'll probably roll our strikes closer to price and just continue to kind of collect that credit and keep that short delta exposure. If we get closer to expiration, we may roll that out to January, but uh, a lot of time left. DIA, kind of the same story as the ES trade where price has, has moved out of our range, but just holding on to this for short delta exposure. So still in December with a lot of time left, so nothing to do there. EEM I mentioned. EFA, another short delta exposure play. This is a short call vertical. And we're still barely within range here, but just looking for some downside to benefit that trade. EWW I mentioned, EWZ I mentioned, Facebook, FXI, IWM. So we've got an iron condor in IWM, pretty well centered here with, with some profit in this piece of the trade. We're still, we're still down a bit on the overall IWM trade, but battling back nicely. So just playing the waiting game there. I mentioned IYR. Netflix, we put on a, I mentioned that one, we put on that short, uh, short call vertical for some downside and uh, we've got some profit there, just waiting for some more. QQQs, these were two sets of short call verticals that were originally part of an iron condor. And uh, we've continued to roll those for a few cycles to keep that short delta exposure. So just looking for some downside to benefit that piece. I mentioned SMH, SPY. We've got a short strangle on in SPY. It was moving up here close to, almost close to, 
uh, needing an adjustment, but uh, bounced uh, bounced back lower nicely. So we're up a little bit on the trade, just waiting for a little bit more down movement and or time to pass before we do anything there. VXX. Okay. So this is, so VXX is obviously inversely correlated to the market. And we put this on when implied volatility is high and we got that big pop in, in that initial drop in the stock market. And then it continued and it ripped higher. I was looking to put on another one here to add to this, but I wanted I was wanted to see if it was going to get a little bit higher, meaning the market was going to continue lower. Uh, it never did, so I never got it on. And, of course, it just dropped. So we, we would have had a nice trade there, playing the hindsight game a little bit, which I don't like to do, but you know, just, just kind of giving you guys my thought process. And then, um, and I mean, this thing just contracted like crazy after the midterm election. Price was right here. I mean, it was right almost back to break even. And I, I put in a couple orders briefly just to see if we get filled at break even. It not didn't quite get there. And then with the market drop uh, the last couple of days, it's bounced back higher. So this is in November. So we've only got seven days left. So we will be taking this off regardless next week, winner or loser. Obviously, if the market goes higher and we get some more contraction here, we might be able to squeak out a little profit. If not, we, we may just book a loss on this one, but we'll see what happens uh, next week. XLK, we have this on for some additional short delta exposure. You can see price has pushed up uh, barely out of our range here, so just looking for some downside to benefit that. And then XRT, we've got a short strangle on here, hanging out near its upper end of its range, so just looking for a little bit of downside to benefit that piece. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the trades. We are uh, we are using pretty close to the maximum amount of capital right now that we want to use based on the overall account size. So uh, you know we started this year with the alerts portfolio with a little under seventy thousand, and we are up to well with with today we're at, we're right around ninety five thousand. So. We're using um, a little under $50,000 in buying power for all of our positions, and so probably won't be adding any until we take a couple off. So uh, still in a good position. I mean, with high implied volatility, that's where you want to be. You want to have a higher allocation of your account, but you don't want to, we don't like to go over that 50% of, of capital used at any time regardless. So we're kind of at that max point of the amount of capital we want to be putting to use at this time. And uh, hopefully things cooperate and we get some contraction and or moves in our direction in the different symbols and we can book some profits and then continue to add. And that's the, that's the name of the game. Just continuing to add positions, book profits, add positions, book profits, make adjustments as necessary. Remember to stay small, stay mechanical and, uh, and everybody have a great weekend and we'll look forward to some more trading next week. Talk to you later.